Thank you, Madam Chair. Honorable Chairperson, distinguished delegates. First of all, let me thank the host for the warm hospitality. Modern people is highly dependent to information technology in almost all walks of life. For instance, in communication, banking, business administration, etc. This technology over an improved enjoyment of human rights. However, they also they also pose serious threats as it as it protrudes the border of privacy and tends to invade human rights and fundamental freedom. This, there have been concern the mentioned by the United Nations Commissioner for Human Rights in his report distributed in June 2015 that some governments have developed technology allowing access to much global internet traffic and huge volume of over-digital communication concerns. Fellow delegates, I'm fully aware that such technology were developed under the sole purpose of national security. How could state claim to be a democratic country when they monitor and brand the privacy of individuals, the right which inherent to human dignity and their existence? Allow me to recall two fundamental rights values that have been that have been enshrined in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Article 12 of the said declaration mentioned that no one shall be subject to arbitrary intervention with his privacy, family, home, or correspondence, nor to attack upon his honor and reputation. It was then reaffirmed by the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Which, which has been agreed as an international legally binding instrument by at least 168 parties as at December 2014. Fellow parliamentarians, let me allow draw your attention to the fact that extra, extraterritorial surveillance, especially when conducted through a communication topic, can pose a negative impact to the interstate relationship. This is somewhat acute in some countries, in some countries, notably in Indonesia. We are gravely concerned about the upsetting event on unlawful or arbitrary inter interruption, interception of communication to some countries conducted by the United States and its five allies, I allies. Such activities, in any cases, may also before to other Asia and the Pacific countries and will become barriers in maintaining mutual trust among countries in their relationship. Indonesia underlining the need to put respect by any means on measure to strengthen mutual respect, mutual trust and friendly relations. In this respect, the signing of a cool of code of conduct between Indonesia and Australia on framework for security last year should be taken into account as an effort to provide common understanding on ways and means of intelligence and surveillance capacity of both countries. Such code of conduct will, ser will serve as guidance between countries on intelligence activities and affirm the need to promote and protect human rights and fundamental freedom enshrined in the international bills of human rights and other relevant human rights treaties. Distinguished delegates, following the adoption of the UN General Assembly Resolution on the Right to Privacy in the Digital Age in 2013, there has been numerous challenges on the implementation of the protection of the human rights, which should also be held not only offline, but online as well. The first is related to the national legislation that serves as enforcement instrument relevant to the protection of the right to privacy, its communication security. In this respect, Indonesia highly respects the promotion and protection of human rights as they are protected under our national constitution. 
The law on human rights broadly provides that each individual has the right to privacy. Any limitation regarding such right can only be exercised upon instruction of a judge or rather lawful authority. Another issue is about the involvement of business in ITIS, in TITIS in the use of personal data of individual. In this respect, corporations should put respect to the promotion and protection of human rights. States should ensure such respect and business entitlers should provide any means to adhere to the United Nations guiding principle and business and human rights. In closing, I would like to urge all states to take a full consideration on the recommendations submitted in a report of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights related to the issue of the right to privacy in the digital aid. I call on all states to ensure full compliance of any surveillance policy with prevailing law of international human rights laws. I thank you.